as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto those who are the household of the faith. Galatians 6, 10. Greetings. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. Website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you're going to go to find the archives. That's where you go to support this mission of truth. So thank you to all of you who do support it. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for joining me this morning. This morning we are looking at this week's prophet portion, which happens to be from the book of Hosea, chapter 12, verses 12 through 14. It deals with the Lord's relentless judgment on Israel. They have abandoned the ways of God. And so we see some, you know, some proclamations of some very, very severe and harsh judgment because they just have abandoned and rebelled. They've rebelled against God and abandoned their uh, their faith and their walk and they've chased after false things and severe judgment is coming. And of course, the prophet's portion for this morning ends with God's plea for Israel to return. And maybe that's a plea for us today. And I would say not maybe, but it definitely is a plea to us today. Let's have a look. Again, Hosea chapter 12, verses 12 through chapter 14. And Jacob fled into the country of Syria. And Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. And by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly. Therefore shall he leave his blood upon him, and his reproach shall his Lord return unto him. When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, he died. And now they sin more and more, and have made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding. All of it, the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, Let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Therefore, they shall be as the morning cloud, and as the early dew that passes away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor, and as the smoke out of the chimney. Yet I am the Lord thy God. From the land, from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior besides me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of the great drought, according to their pasture. So were they filled, they were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Therefore I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard by the way, I will observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps, and I will rend the call of their hearts, and there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities? And thy judges of whom thou saidest, Give me a king and princes? I gave thee a king in my anger, and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up, his sin is hid. The sorrows of a traveling woman shall come upon thee, a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. I will ransom them from the power of the grave, I will redeem them from death, O oh, death! I will be thy plague. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come, the wind of the Lord shall come upon come shall come up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry, 
and his fountain shall be dried up. He shall spoil the treasures of all pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword, their infants shall be dashed in pieces, their women with child shall be ripped up. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thy iniquity. Take with you words, and turn to the Lord, and say unto him, Take away all iniquity, and receive us graciously, so we will render the calves of our lips. Asher shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses, neither will we say any more to the work of our hands, Ye are our gods. For in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily, and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread, his his beauty shall be as the olive tree, and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwelled under his shadow shall return, and they shall receive as the corn, and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him, I observed him. I am like a green fir tree, from me is thy fruit found. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things prudent and shall know them for the ways of the Lord are right and the just shall walk in them but the transgressors shall fall therein all right you know one of the reasons I wanted to do the prophets portion this year specifically and why I wanted to focus on that is because I just knew that there would be a word for us just week after week after week because like Israel Back then, we have fallen. We have abandoned God. We have rebelled against God. We have set up idols. And we're at that cusp where severe judgment, just the harshest type of judgment, is at the door. But there's still a plea from God, I think. Return. Return and I'll heal your backslidings. Return and I'll heal this iniquity that you've fallen into. Let's just look at uh, if some of these verses again real quick here. Right here in verse 9. He says, O Israel, thou, ha thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. Man, that's what's happened to us here in the United States of America and many of the other countries around the world that are listening to my voice. We've destroyed ourselves. We've chased after such evil and wickedness, and we've become complacent, and we've quenched the spirit. And now, and now, even things that are that are very, very evil, or would have been considered very, very evil by our forefathers, are considered light things. We don't even think about it too much. It takes some of the most grievous and filthiest things even to get us to bat an eye. We've destroyed ourselves. We have abandoned the ways of God and chased after our own desires. We've exalted ourselves instead of exalting Him. Forgetting that He's the one that takes, He's, he's the one in charge of all these things. You know, we've been talking about the King so much lately and how God is actually in control of that, of that situation because, and it's kind of at the forefront of our minds here in the United States of America and around the world because what happens here impacts everywhere. And so, you know, everything going on with the election and all that, and we're like, what's going on? And forgetting that God's the one who's in control. At the end of the day, he'll decide. He says, he says, I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities? So let's just read those two verses together again. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thy help. First thing he's saying is you did this to yourself, but... If you turn to me, I am able to help you with this. I will be thy king. Remember, we need to be putting our eyes on Jesus, putting our eyes on the Father. He's the only one that can save us. No political leader, no elected president, no king is going to be able to save us, right? He says, I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all the cities? He's like, who is it? Who else could do this for you? 
and thy judges of whom thou saidest, Give me a king and a prince. I gave thee a king in my anger, and I took him away in my wrath. It's just a reminder that God sets up kings and takes them down. He's saying, who else can help you? Besides, as far as kings are concerned, I give them to you and I take them away. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. And then the severe judgment that's coming. He says, Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come, the wind of the Lord shall come up, shall come up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry, and his fountain shall be dried up, and he shall spoil the treasures of all pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate, for they hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword, their infants shall be dashed to pieces, and their women with child shall be ripped up. So there's the severe judgment that's coming. I mean, severe. That imagery uh, is horrifying, right? But then there's this plea. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thy thine iniquity. Remember, he said earlier, you have destroyed yourself, but in me is the help. He says, return to the Lord, in verse 1 of chapter 14, for thou hast fallen by thy own iniquity, right? You've chosen sin, and you've fallen according to it. You've destroyed yourselves. Verse 2 says, Take with you words and turn to the Lord. And then he says specifically what to say. He's like, I mean, God's making this so plain. He's like, look, you did this to yourself. I can help you. Here's what you need to say. Say unto him, Take away all iniquity, and receive us graciously, so we will render the calves of our lips. Assure shall not save us, we will not ride upon horses, neither will we say any more to the work of our hands, ye are gods. For in thee the fatherless find mercy. What he's wanting them to repent of is their idol worship and their rejection of God. He's saying, you've done this to yourself. You've fallen by your own iniquity. But I can help you, but you need to say these words, right? You need to come to me with a heart of repentance. You need to turn away from this way. Ask me to heal your iniquities. And repent of your idol worship. And he says what he'll do. Verse 4. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For my anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under a shadow shall return. They shall receive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, what have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. And then it ends with this. Who is wise and shall understand these things? Prudent and shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them. But the transgressor shall fall therein. So he says all these things, and he says, who, but, but who among you is wife, wise? Like, here's the warning, here's the promises, but who among you is wise and prudent? Who among you will actually write, walk in rightness, walk in righteousness? And who is going to walk in wickedness and fall as a result of all this judgment? You know, I wonder... With everything that's happened this year, I, you know, I like to think that the church is on its face, right? I like to think that there's millions of Christians around this country and even more millions around the world who are crying out to God, repenting of sin, turning away from evil and wickedness. 
you know, making war with their addictions. That's what I like to think. I hope that that's true. I hope that those of you listening to my voice, you're, you're, you're taking praying seriously. You're taking your lifestyle seriously. You're repenting on behalf of your nation. You're crying out to God for grace and mercy and for righteousness, for goodness to be in the land again. My fear is that even with all of this going on, the unrest, the political madness, the lockdowns, the you know virus, all these things, my fear is that it, it's just revealed that many are Christian in name only. And that rather than looking up to God and crying out to God and examining their own lives and repenting of sin and and doing all these things like what's what's described here about you know all the things that are involved of returning to the Lord my fear and concern is that instead people continue to look for men they continue to look for a political answer to a spiritual problem they continue to and even when they're not looking they the other option is they put their head in the sand and pretend like none of it's happening nothing to see here that's my concern. Ultimately, all we can do is preach the word, share the good news of Jesus and the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. All we can do is be prudent to ourselves and walk in righteousness and holiness. And I believe God will preserve his remnant if the need for severe judgment is necessary because if there's if there's a lack of repentance if there's a lack of turning back to God this situation that we find ourselves in is only going to increasingly get worse we need to examine ourselves right we need to look in the mirror and examine ourselves daily and see are we believing in the faith we need to take a look at ourselves and we need to repent and say, search me, O Lord. And those things that we're struggling with, that we know that we're failing in, we need to keep making war with it. And then we need to keep repenting and saying, Lord, help me. I don't want to sin against you. This is the attitude of the saints. We need to put down our idols and seek after God. I hope you've been blessed by this reading this morning. And uh, hopefully my, again, I always, I'm always concerned that my human commentary taints the, the word of God. But uh, I pray that you've been blessed. Thank you for your support. Um, you know, it's far more than I deserve. And I'm just very, very grateful for all of you. If you want to support this work, you can go to scriptureandprophecy.com. Click on the donate and support tab. Or think, consider becoming a monthly Patreon subscriber, which really helps make this thing happen. You can also pick up a copy of the book, The End of Days, a 30-day devotional, which will be a huge blessing to you if you have not read it. I promise you'll be blessed. Thank you again for listening to me this morning. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless. <laughs>